A little while ago, I made a video called False Porch Post Damage, uh, the old tongue twister there. And uh, I had a request to make a video because uh, the viewer couldn't figure out just how in the heck you could hold up the porch um, roof without a post. And uh, realistically, it's through a cantilevered um, roof system, which I'll explain in a little bit. Now, here's another picture of the post that realistically can be removed. You can remove these posts because the roof is held up by a cantilevered um, type of framing system. I have one more picture to show you here before I get to the nuts and bolts. And of course, this is a good example of what I'm talking about. The eight columns um, in the back of this building, um, realistically, uh, they might not be structural posts if it's framed with this um, cantilevered system like I'm talking about. And, and it's not uncommon to find that. So like I said, I don't know if these posts are structural or not. I'm just trying to give you an example of what I'm talking about before I dive into the pictures here. Okay, here's a picture of what I'm talking about. And this might look like a little dog or an animal with legs. I'm sorry, I did the best I could. Um, what it actually is, is two walls holding up a ceiling. And of course, in, in uh, this case, it'd actually be a structural ceiling. Now I went ahead and put in a false wall, which in this case would be a post. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how something like this would work. And again, you might need to watch this video a couple of times to get a good grasp on what I'm talking about. But uh, just what if I remove that post? Um, realistically, with this type of a framing system, uh, it really wouldn't matter. Uh, and again, it's, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting that anyone goes out and builds something like this because realistically, anytime you run into a cantilevered floor or a roof overhang um, system like this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a structural engineer involved. And um, the reason why I'm saying that is because the distance of the cantilever, um, the distance that it pops out from the wall, um, and of course the weight that would be on top of the roof, um, realistically um, could determine your um, the sizes of materials you would need to use. So keep that in mind before jumping the gun here. As a general rule of thumb, um, you do not want uh, any overhang to protrude over a third of the distance of the length of the material that you're using for your ceiling joist or your floor joist. So just to give you an idea, let's just say that um, the board that we're using for our ceiling joist is um, 18 feet long. Then realistically, if we divided that up into thirds, we would have three sixes. We would have six feet, six feet, and six feet. You would not want the cantilever to protrude over six feet. Now that's just a general rule of thumb. Like I said, if you're going to be getting, if you're going to be building a um, room addition or a house or something like that, or even a porch that uh, you really don't know which I would imagine most of us don't um, know exactly how to build it. Wouldn't be a bad idea to get an engineer involved just to make sure you're not building something that's going to fall down in the future. Let's go ahead and put a roof on top of our little dog here so it doesn't look like a farm animal anymore. Hey, who knows what it looks like now. But uh, as you can see, we got a roof on it, and I wanted to give you an idea of how the weight would transfer we got the weight on the roof and it's transferring down to the bottom. And of course, on the right, it is actually going to go straight down um, to the foundation. On the other side, it's, gonna, it's going to be sitting on top of the um, ceiling joist and of course, working its way down the front wall. But you can see right now something like this. Um, could work. However, in the next example, uh, we might run into something uh, that might not work. And here's a good example of what I'm talking about. I went ahead and I moved the wall back, and it looks like it's about halfway now. The cantilever's sticking out about 
half the distance of the ceiling joist there. And of course, this isn't looking good. Uh, we it's basically teetering on that wall or the whole roof system. If you kind of just connected it all into one, um, realistically, we could have a problem and it wouldn't be hard to imagine something like this happening. So uh, again, do you think about the equal weight distribution or just um, a little weight offset? And of course, something like this um, does make sense. You know, you could actually um, end up with a roof coming in the front there if you didn't position your walls and your cantilever correctly. So again, I hope these videos help. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave some comments and I will see if I can answer them.